Okay, after waiting three and a half hours for the next train to Naples, I boarded first class seating for the five and a half hour trip. The new ticket fare went from 43 euros to 88 euros, and for another 15 euros, I splurged and treated myself to first class. I was really frazzled and I needed the extra comfort. All in all, it was really well worth it. Now we went from about $55 ticket to $118 ticket, but you know what? At this point, I didn't care. I just wanted to get there and rest. These two are really very cute. Um, at the train station, you can purchase your ticket from the vending machine behind them. They're all over the train station. Or they will actually help you and uh, do it for you, which I found them to be cute, helpful, and very endearing. They just calmed me right down. Never missed a plane before, a boat, or a train before. But for some reason, this was not going very well today. Uh, they were really nice. They're a very cute, cute couple. And there it is. There's the uh, the bullet train, the fast train that goes 300 miles an hour, and with a comfortable seat. And in first class, they come around and give you coffee and tea and some snacks, which which is okay, I guess. Um, but the most important thing, it w I got there and I wasn't tired from the train ride at all. It was really quite comfortable. So Naples was going to be from April the 5th to the 10th, and this was the last uh, reservation I had on Airbnb because I had two weeks of open, uh, nothing to do, nowhere to go. I was just waiting to get uh, my flight on the 27th of April uh, to, um, to Greece for a month. Uh, so that uh, was the plan. That those reservations were made back in oh I don't know back in uh, January or February. Uh, so I so that was it. Um, this is the neighborhood of Naples. It's a suburb. Uh, it's really a very cute uh, little uh, suburb there. Uh, people really do sit and hang out on the bench and gather around and talk and in the sun it feels good. Naples was getting warmer for me. Uh, it was much warmer than Rome or Venice and that really felt. Now the, this was part, this is again part of the uh, the um, the neighborhood uh, and this was the the landmark for me to get the directions to find this woman's house uh, where I was going to stay but I found that to be the directions with these people in the Airbnb were good, but they always seemed to be missing something that made me wonder, what's next? Where do I go next? Left or right? I don't know. But um, I was exhausted. No, 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 uh, no doubt about that. I walked out of the uh, the metro station, climbed a couple of flights of stairs, and wandered around trying to figure out where she was. Uh, finally, someone called for me, talked to her, and then she decided to come down and meet me right here with this fish on the guy's head, whatever that's put. Now this is Chara. She is the host of the of her Airbnb, and the way it works is you you rent a room, the host is there to help you, give you some ideas of where is a good restaurant or a good coffee shop or sightseeing places. Uh, but she was really pretty busy, and uh, she really didn't want to have me there because she decided that she needed to be working. But uh, she took the reservation, and I spent a lot of time alone in the apartment. And this is the view uh, from my room. I was on the ninth floor with a very tiny, tiny elevator and thank God for that because I could not have walked up nine flights of steps. I can barely I could have barely walked up two from the metro. Uh but you know it was a small room. It was a cute room uh but it was nothing like uh the house in Venice which was really 
expansive and big. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I'm in Naples, and that's. She had two really sweet cats. One of them liked to sit on my lap, and I really liked that. Uh, I really miss not having an animal uh, here in uh, my house. Now, Naples has very impressive architecture, just like Rome. Everywhere you turn, there's going to be a, a courtyard or a square. And uh, this is the Dante Metro stop where I'm going to walk to find the pizza place that she gave me directions to. Supposedly the best pizza place in the world. Another shot of the square, a little different angle, but it's big. And uh, people like to hang out and sit at the cafes under the umbrellas in the corner. And just, it's a very relaxed atmosphere with these people in Italy. They really know how to enjoy themselves way more than the people in America. Everywhere you go, there's steps. There's steps everywhere. I didn't have to climb these steps because, you know what, I don't think I could. I was weak. My legs would give out. Uh, carrying a backpack and a, two backpacks, basically. One was very heavy. One was not so heavy. Uh, but it really used all my energy. Like I just took a picture to show you what steps look like. And in Rome, there are even more because Rome was built on seven hills. So, um, I'm on my way to pizza place. And this is what I came to Naples for, the pizza. Naples is the birthplace of pizza, and it tastes so good. It's so fantastic. And it's different. It's not like the pizza we know where the crust is a little bit, it's a little bit more crispy. The crust here is a little bit more doughy. But the taste with the mozzarella cheese and the margarita uh, tomato sauce, you, you, you died for it. And I am okay. Now, she told me to come. Uh, Chara gave me directions and told me to come before 1230. So I got there about 10 minutes to 12. And this is what I found. 40 people waiting for it to open up at 12 o'clock. Mostly tourists. But this pizza place has been around since 1920 and has a really great reputation and as, as you can see they have it in New York they have it in Naples and they have it in Milan luckily I was by myself and I squeezed myself to the front and there just so happened to be one table uh, like the bar like the countertop with a single chair so I took it and I got I don't know what to say about it. All I can, I hope the picture says 10,000 words because hmm, I can smell it still. I remember it so vividly. Now, this pizza is from a different pizza place, which was in the neighborhood where I was living. That, too, was uh, a, a world-famous pizza. They uh, were uh, around since... 1901 making pizza right at that one location and this pizza was uh, salami and garlic very good as you can eat the whole thing it was gone in 20 minutes in Italy if you're with other people and you buy pizza you don't share the pizza you buy your own pizza and you eat your own pizza that's something I learned from uh, someone who travels a lot and after Pizza? Ah, with nothing like a good cappuccino or a cafe latte to round out the meal. And um, that's exactly what this is here. This is a cappuccino. It's a little stronger in the sugar, which I don't use. But um, the blends of the pizza, the, the coffee, it all kind of blends together. Well, five days went by very fast. And I didn't have another Airbnb reservation anywhere because there were two weeks where I was going to find something to do, go somewhere, because then after that I was going to Greece. I had a flight arranged and 
I had four Airbnb uh, reservations in Greece for a month. But the problem um, was that I wasn't feeling good at all. And I realized the sightseeing was over. And I just needed to have a place to rest. And I didn't care the location. I just wanted it to be comfortable. I wanted it to be clean. And I wanted it to be as as a as cost effective as possible since since basically I was really there just to to sleep, to rest, not to do anything. And at that particular time, at the beginning of April, the cheap uh places are usually gone. Um because they're booked up, you know, a, a month in advance. I booked up these reservations back in uh January and February. So I had to really scramble to find something, but I did, and uh, that brings me to the next stop, which was Pizzuli, and I'll tell you about that in the next uh, in the in the in the next PowerPoint.